We'll show you uh, how we can machine this um, fretboard. Okay, so we've uh, imported the DXF file into Partmaster CAD, and now we need to do a couple of things: uh, create contours of the outside shape and a profile, which will be the curved uh, top face. So we first will go into NC mode. Now uh, you can see where the datum is for this shape now if we needed to we could m move the datum to a different position over here or at this other end or wherever you wanted the <coughs> the datum to be but we'll leave it where it is for the time being uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll create a contour which is for machining in the XY plane uh, and we'll give this uh, depth okay so that's created a contour of the outside if we also need to do something with this inside shape, then we do that the same, maybe with a different depth. Uh, okay, so that's done that. Uh, and now we're going to create what we call a profile, which is something which is happening in the Z axis. So we choose profile, and we click on that. And because it's not an enclosed shape, I can leave all the defaults as they are, and just give it the end point, which would be the very last point there. Okay, so we've got that done. So now we can link into machining. Uh, save that uh, file away. And this is the uh, file which uh, we've created. Uh, so first of all, we set up a tool. So this is the um, uh, tool that we want so if we're going to be machining the uh, the top face first of all and then we use the select tool command to create uh, a tool change sequence and then what we do then is we use the Z profile which is here okay so I've created one of those so what we do there is we first of all have to determine whereabouts we want this to be machined in the Z axis so I'm setting a work surface of minus 0.1 of an inch okay uh, now the next thing is whereabouts is this going to be machined so the profile currently sits there so what we need to do is make it so that the start point of the profile is there and it's going to be rotated through 90 degrees so the start point is this left hand corner so I'm moving that 5 inches in the X axis and 1.25 in the Y to bring it to this position here. The slot, oops, okay, I need to give that the name. Um, the slot, we need to twist it around by 90 degrees, and an important setting is the vector tolerance. So this will con uh, control the coarseness of the cut so a finer tolerance will give a better finish but it will take longer to calculate and give you a bigger g-code file then we go into surface so we're going to create a ruled surface so <clears throat> the ruled surface is at 90 degrees to where the profile sits as it is so it's twisted around by 90 degrees and then we need a linear distance between the slots and the total number of slots and then when we're doing this we can say machine uh, alternate slots in the reverse direction okay so let's just uh, run that so you can see what happens with that okay so you can see where that's being ma being machined which is in the uh, wrong position uh, so I can just change where that's going to take place uh, now the spacing between the slots can be controlled by the distance that we set so obviously a larger distance would give you a coarser um, cut a finer distance will give you a finer cut but obviously it will take longer to calculate and give you a bigger g-code file so if we go back into this one here then my start position here would obviously need to be minus okay now you can see how that's going to cut that so what you might need to do is you might need to draw the uh, curved profile here uh, extended at either end so that it covers more of the the actual fretboard itself
Okay, so that's created that. Uh, the next thing that we do is use the go round command, which is accessed from the uh, toolbar here, and we give it the the name of the contour we want it to machine. So that would be the outside one, and then we can set up the cutting direction, set up the offset, and so on, and also give it a depth. Okay, now I'm not sure what you need to do with the inside shape, but I guess you need to machine that. So again, what we've done there is we'll just say that's the shape that we want, and we give it a depth. And then we run all of that. So you've got the the actual board itself with the curvature along the top if that's what's required. If you don't need this, if it's a flat surface and you just want to machine just individual slots then you use the same Z profile command but you create a single slot at a given position and then you can create further slots uh, just by using uh, the offset. Uh, so that's that machined. If you want to go into the simulator let me just simulate that. <clears throat> so that's just calculating the uh, the toolpath, and then it will uh, link through to the machine tool simulator. Okay, so that's creating the simulated data. Okay, that's all done. Click OK. So now the simulator is being called up. And this is where we can set up the stock size. At the moment, the stock size is being calculated from the uh, extents of the toolpath. So if we don't need to change anything, then we can just leave it as it is. Um, if we wanted to do something else with the tool, we could set up a different... Um, uh, sizes for the arbor and the holder if we wanted uh, to do some collision checking but in most cases it's just the tool diameter which is needed so uh, that sets up the simulated data calls up the uh, machine tool simulator and then passes it and we get the file so this is just looking in the uh, view where we just have the um, material and the tool and then the uh, command, uh, uh, um, the controls are at the top here so we've got the run command here and then we've got speed up slow down button here so we can speed up and slow down the simulation to see exactly what it's doing over on the right hand side here it's giving us the um, individual blocks that it's uh, simulating slider bar at the bottom here is showing us the progress So now it machines the other parts. So obviously there we would need to set up the Z values for that. So if I, when I zoomed in here, you can see the uh, the amount of the um, cusp heights there. So obviously you would need to control the number of cuts and so on, so that you get um, exactly what it is you want. This depends on the material, which I don't know what that is. Uh, but at any time you can always go back into here and you can change the depths of things maybe those two outside contours need to be changed and so on and then just re-simulate that <coughs> pardon me so the thing with the simulator is that it's it's actually running on uh, uh, G codes that uh, are created so that uh, uh, it's uh, simulating what the machine tool will, uh, will actually do. Now obviously you could use different tools for the uh, surface machining and the contour machining so uh, 
uh, but the way that you do that is just as you've seen me do previously we just use the tool and select tool commands from the main toolbar okay so this time round what we'll do is we'll switch on the full machine simulator so we're just working on a, uh, a standard milling machine now if he wants to at any time we can open up these doors to give us a better view we can zoom in drag scroll down this is all done by using the the mouse buttons and then we just simply simulate it if at any time we want to we can switch off the machine housing so that uh, we can see the table and everything else but we don't see the the extremities of the machine it gives us a much better view now obviously here if we go to the report button we can see here that the the x value is going uh, below its minimum because obviously it's machining off the end of the table so we'd need to reposition the stock so that it was actually lying directly onto the bed of the machine in the correct position okay so there we are Now you may need to use different tools to do this, but that's uh, how we can read in a DXF file and create the uh, program and the simulation for that. Okay. Show you.